Well, let's welcome to the studio former England forward Leanne Sarnison. How are you? I'm great, thank you, guys. Good to be back with you. It's lovely to have you in the studio. Just before we talk about the squad and the players that won't be playing, etc., what's it like from your situation now, right, this side of the fence, if you like, um, talking about the squad, but a squad that you're not in, looking ahead to a big championship coming up? I think it begins beginning of July. What, yeah. How, what, how do you cope with that? Is that easy or...? I think it gets easier because I think as well, I've spoken about my England career many times before. I was happy to get 50 caps, but I don't look back on my England England career with a lot of joy. And I've spoken about that, you know, when they forgot about my 50th cap and, you know, I don't really think I played as much as I should have. And that's not because I think I'm Ronaldo. I think anybody would tell you that. Um, but I wish the team the best of luck. And I think, you know, for me, I'm happy to be in the studio with you guys. You know, I love being a footballer. But now I feel like I'm in my dream job now, genuinely. And sometimes, you know, when I go to the games, it does make me feel you get like, you know, you get itchy feet. You want to be out there, the smell of the grass, small things. Like mm. when I went to watch Tottenham play MK Don's pre-season at MK Don Stadium and it was a men's game. And I was like, I never thought about playing football again. And it's because I scored there for England and played there. And I remembered playing there. But other than that, you know, I love doing what I'm doing now. And the fact that I'm still in the game and, you know, being able to talk about the men's game, the women's game and stuff like that, it, it makes a difference, I think. I just love football. You know, when you look at the squads and you you were part of the squad that obviously finished runner-up in 2009, compared to this squad now that's just been announced and the squad that you played in, what are the differences or can you see comparisons between the two? If I'm being totally honest and people will say, well, of course you're going to say this because you were part of that squad, yeah. but I think our squad was better, genuinely. And I think the players that are in the squad now, the likes of Jill Scott and stuff like that, I'm sure if you asked them and they were being honest, you know, you look at the 2015 squad when we won the bronze medal, you know, we had Tony Duggan, Eniona Maluko, you know, Jody Taylor, Karen Bardley in goal, Farrah Williams, you know, the list goes on. And yeah. I genuinely think because there's more publicity around the team now, people think the team is better, but I don't genuinely think that's the case. That's not me saying they're not good, but I'm, I'm mindful of the amount of pressure that's on the girls for this tournament because we are England, we are a nation, we do put pressure on tournaments, don't we? Mm -hmm. We haven't won anything since 1966. Every time we go in a tournament, we think we're going to win. But why do we think that? So I just think people need to... Yes, it is in our own backyard. It's in England, which helps. But I think sometimes we need to be realistic. We've got good players... But I do think our squad was better before, and that's just my honest opinion. And that's coming from someone that played every minute of every game going to the World Cup, and then I got dropped when I got there. Yeah. So I'm looking at it from a completely not a perspective because people can say, well, you're in that squad, so of course you're mm. going to say it's better. I do think there were some players that I think would get in our squad now. Beth Mead, you know, at Hemp and stuff like that. I do think they would. But when I look back on our squad, Alex Scott, you know, the list goes on. Mm. We're, we're one of the favourites. One of the reasons you mentioned, because it's on home. So I know Spain are one of the favourites. We'll, we'll talk about Spain, Holland as well. Sweden, supposedly the dark horses as well. I just I just want to ask you with where this current women's England side is. We've got, I think I'm right in saying we've got to the last three semi-finals of major tournaments. If you compare it to the men's at the moment, there's a lot of pressure, certainly on the back of last night's defeat, going into our World Cup. Would you say it, it, it's similar? Because you look at England's performance under Gareth Southgate, the last couple we've done really well and we go into a World Cup and there's a lot of expectation. I personally don't think we'll win it. I think that's asking a little bit too much, but we're expected to get to the latter stages. Is it exactly the same in the women's game going into this tournament, do you think? I think so, probably even more now because there's no excuses anymore. I think back in the day, you know, we, we were part-time going into tournaments in 2009. Some of my teammates are teachers, you know, going to work all day. They weren't able to solely commit to football because it was part-time semi-pro. Whereas now, you know, you've got to give the Football Association a lot of credit. They have put a lot of money into the women's game. They do exactly what they do with the men's. You know, they have everything at their disposal. Whereas back in the day, we didn't. You know, I had the best of both worlds. I was able to turn pro and see it from the other side. Small things like getting your kit washed. The men would laugh, but that's what they, they get all the time. Whereas mm -hmm. we didn't get stuff like that. So it was great when they went to St. George's Park and stuff like that. But I do think the game has changed in a better, in a good way. You know, I think there's more publicity now. There's more pressure. And I'm just mindful of that. Like I said, because some of these girls have gone from complete obscurity to in the last like six months, women's football is everywhere. Mm. I was on my way in today from Milton Keynes and the billboards are absolutely everywhere. And I've always said, and you laughed at me last time I was on the show, if I don't know about a Beyonce concert, I'm not going to go to the O2 and just wait for her. And I've always said, if you advertise something, people will come. Mm. And I'm and I'm so happy I'm on the train and, and, also, and I'm so, seeing billboards and everything. I, I also think it's not just about that. It's the next generation of kids coming through. So I've got two daughters. My oldest isn't interested in football at all. My youngest loves it. I took it as a football train on Monday. And it's because I talk about the Lionesses because it's on telly now. You see it on the builds. Mm. It makes such a huge difference. So the next generation of women coming through could just be on a different level to what we're currently seeing, not just England, but all around the world. Yeah, definitely. And I think people are more open-minded to it now. I think when I first started playing when I was five years old, you know, 
being a female, being a girl playing the football, I'd walk down the pitch in my man, um, the street in my Man United kit, and I'd get people shouting out of car windows. And that's because you're wearing a Man United shirt. Yeah, maybe. Nothing to do with your sex <laughs> at all. I think it's a mixture of both, but some of the comments, they don't happen now. Still goes on, but at the same time, being a girl, when you see girls playing in the park now, it's not seen as, oh my God, there's a girl playing football. It's just the norm. And that mm. makes me happy. Mm. It does. And again, back to the squad. I mean, you look at the, the squad that's been announced. Who who are the key people for you, Leanne? And, and is anyone that kind of missed out that you think, mm, I would have had them in the squad? Yeah, I think it's difficult because I've said this many times before. Serena Vigman, I like her. You know, I think she's done a really good job coming in from Phil Neville. People say, you know, she she's played against not great opposition. But the only players that I think, I mean, I look at, I can see why she's picked Jill Scott for the leadership. But Katie yeah. Zellum this year has been fantastic for Manchester United. Her assists are fantastic. And if I was Katie, I'd definitely be disappointed yeah. to have not been in that squad. Especially Fran Kirby. I love Fran. She's a good friend of mine. Great girl. But really, she hasn't played. So it's like, how do you... It's similar to the men's, isn't it? Yeah. Are you picking players like when people say, you know, Harry Maguire, He's not let me Jordan down. Pickford yeah. has never let me down. I think These it's a mixture will go of both, in. isn't it? It's who you trust yeah. as manager, right? But I just don't know if, if certain players... You, you know you're 11. Serena Vigman will know that her 11. She'll know the 14 and 15 players that she'll be playing. The rest of them are going to be people that are okay with not playing. And that's not in the mm. in in wrong way. That's the reality, isn't it? It's yeah. okay because not every manager needs 23 players knocking on their door. They know it. So they want to build a mixture of players that I'm not saying are okay to be on the bench, but they do that. And to be honest, the squad got announced today, but the players would have found out they yesterday. Yeah. You would have found out. So even when I saw some interviews today, I thought, oh, I wonder if I can see who's not been picked because you you can you kind of can't fake it till you make it but you can yeah. kind of tell uh, let me ask you about serena vigman um one of the reasons i'm guessing why we're fancy for this tournament home soil will of course be one of them but she was in charge of the dutch side that won the euros in 2017 she's only been with england since september how much can she how much of what she wants to do for the girls how much of what she wants to do on the pitch and formations and tactics and picking the side and getting to know the players how much can she do in the small amount of time she's been with this group of players i think where she took where she took the Netherlands in the time that she was there, you know, winning a tournament, they went from completely not being in the running, not even being able to compete with us when I used to play against them in the Cyprus Cup mm. and that, to now being able to compete. And I think she's done a really good job since she's come in. They're scoring a lot of goals. I think people have said, you know, they will definitely kind of, it doesn't matter who they're playing against, they would have scored this many goals. I don't believe that's the case. Because mm. under Phil Neville, they didn't look as free-flowing as they do now. Wow. And the last tournament... Of course, was the World Cup 2019 major tournament. They went out to the USA in the semi-finals. Do you think this England squad is in a better place now than it was then? And couldn't they maybe go one step further this, in this tournament? Yeah, definitely. I think they're in a better place because I think they've got a better manager. I think they've got a manager that knows the women's game. I think it's important to know that. When Phil never went in there, being a Man United fan, we give people the benefit of the doubt, you know, yeah. when you're your team. Cause why you why didn't it sleeve. work for Philip Neville? I just don't... I don't know. The girls seem to like him, but it just... It's all very well liking someone, but... I just think some of his decisions he made and the results were not good enough. What you mean, like, in-match decisions? Yeah, in-game decisions. I think some of the comments he made didn't help himself. When he went into the job, he said winning the bronze medal wasn't that big of a deal when it was probably one of the proudest moments of my career. And that's not... And in the men's game, you know, third, fourth playoff isn't nothing, but you have to be realistic of where mm. the women's game is at. And that's why I think those comments, I don't think, helped his cause. I don't think he did an awful job. But I just think people were looking a bit like, why did he get the job in the first place? So it was always going to be... A big job for him. Can, can I ask, the, the, the sex side of things will always come into it, whether or not you can have a, a man in charge of the women's team and also a woman in charge of the men's team. It's, a, it's something that people always discuss. Now, we've got Serena Vigman in charge of the England team. You mentioned Philip Neville there as well. You've got, I think I might say, Mark Parsons is now in charge of the Dutch side. Does it, from your perspective as a woman, does it make a difference to you who's in that dressing room giving you orders before the game? No, it doesn't. D does genuinely. it to any of your teammates? Have you ever had that decision? Or that discussion, sorry? No, I've never had that discussion with my teammates. I think the media talk about that quite a lot. Yeah. Um, but I think it just changes things a little bit because obviously a female manager could be in the dressing room a little bit more. Things change, you know, if you've mm. got a male manager, you have to knock on the door before so, they come so how in. how does that work? So when Philip Neville was in charge, before the game at half-time and, and yeah. full-time, how does he that work? He would have to have probably asked somebody. When I've had male managers, you know, when Mark was a manager and stuff like that, they have to wait until, you know, people are ready for him to come in. So it changes the dynamic a little bit. Mm. But, you know, I've had Emma Hayes as my manager. She was yeah. fantastic. And I also had Vic Akers as my manager and he was brilliant. So I think for me, it's about man management. Do you think, and, sorry, do you think one day, you mentioned Emma Hayes, do you think one day she will be England manager? Um, I think that she could have been already if she wanted to be. Yeah. But I think she's happy at Chelsea. I'm not surprised. Winning, Genuinely. <laughs> like, I think, you know, sometimes in that role, your hands are tied. You know, mm. it's not always, I'm not saying the manager doesn't make the decisions, but yeah. 
This it's a bigger. Emma's very much like wants to manage and do what she's doing, as opposed to she wouldn't be told what to do. And I respect that about her because I'm mm. a bit like that as well. She was linked recently to um, was it MK Dons? Have I made that up? No, it, uh, it was. It was, we, it's Wimbledon. Apologies, AFC Wimbledon. Yeah, apologies to MK Dons fans. I get the two. Yeah, you're going to get. But she was. <laughs> I've had worse, believe me. And and she came out and said that she didn't understand why um, such a big fuss was made of the the step over, not necessarily the step up. Can, what's your view on whether or not she should be moving into the men's game? Because it's so difficult to talk about because you don't want to be accused of being sexist. But at the moment, I think it's fair to say, at the moment, the men's game at that level is... The, the level of football that we're seeing is slightly better than the women's game. So I personally think, this is not being sexist, I think it would be a step up for any manager in the women's game at the moment to go into a club in maybe the Championship or the or the Premier League. Would you agree with that or not? Um, it with, depends. With regards to the level of football you're seeing? Yeah. Okay. Definitely, but so, I think you're comparing, you know, apples and oranges. I think you look at the women's tennis, Serena Williams, don't compare it to Federer. So no, I think not, I want to look at it from a, what, what from a completely different sport. No, do you what, know what I mean? Uh, totally, but what I'm asking is, do you, do you think that she sees it as... So for I'm saying, if a team in the Premier League came in for her, would she see that as a step up? Do you think she should see it as a step up? Because she's managing Chelsea, and her dream as Chelsea is to win the Champions League, yeah. which is the only trophy that's eluded her so far. She'll probably win it because she's a ridiculous coach, right? We know she's that. She's brilliant, yeah. She's absolutely brilliant. And Benty quite rightly asked the question about whether or not she should manage the national side. But do you... Do you I, see, I see no reason why the, a woman shouldn't be managing a men's team in the Premier League or in yeah. the Championship. I think if anyone can do it, it's Emma. Of all the female managers that I've had, it would definitely be Emma. You know, I had her at Arsenal when we won the quadruple. She mm. was fantastic. But I think if Emma was to be given an opportunity to manage in a Premier League, I think she would take it. I don't necessarily see, you know, that's no disrespect. It might not necessarily be a step up, but from a club perspective, that's like going back 20 years ago saying, you know, Wimbledon is better than a, or an MK Dons or a team like, you know, Kingstonians better than a women's team. Because what? Because they're men. Does that make sense? No, but the, Whereas for me, the, I think the Premier League is the holy ground. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, the Premier League is where. But the championship, it is. the championship for for the, a level of football is still mm -hmm. better, right? And this is this doesn't include sex. It's it's totally. I know what you're saying about. It's hard for it. me to compare though, Andy, I'm, because you're comparing the WSL to the Championship. I'm, I mean, I'm, when we play against the men, yeah. I, I play against. We played when I played for England uh, against South End under 18s Academy. We got absolutely battered about 11 nil, and it's got nothing to do with the quality. It's got with genetics. You lot are quicker than us. That's just how it is. No, but I'm not discussing that. I, what I'm saying is if you're in the fourth tier of English football and mm -hmm. you get offered a job in the second tier, you have to take it. Right. That's but I think Emma's being linked to jobs that are probably not even being offered to her. Genuinely. Yeah. I don't even know mm. where these rumours even come from. But it's, I do think if she was given an opportunity to manage a men's team in the Premier League, I'd hope, I'd, I'd then like I think to think she so. would take I'd it. I'd like to see Because it, it is like a step up.